hi friends in our last session we have seen this uh, method of adjusting clearance in slide width in today's session we are going to see design criteria for slide width so basically it is based on two criteria first considering wear resistance and second considering stiffness so we are going to focus on wear resistance this is kazan kakti and i welcome you all to our lecture series of machine tool design so let's begin now design criteria and calculations for slide waste so we can say that slide waste would be designed based on two parameters first one is called a wear resistance second is called a stiffness wear means we know that wear and tear or a surface is uh, rough or at a matting place okay the matting surface gets rougher okay the material is removed so higher would be a wear resistance lesser would be the material removal right and second is stiffness stiffness means resistance to deformation so higher should be the deform uh, resistance to deformation of the slide way material so let's see the design based on which we can do so the wear resistance of a slide way is mainly governed by maximum pressure acting on a matting surface the condition may be written as p max should be less than or equal to in a bracket p max now that p max in a bracket is called a permissible well and over your p max is a maximum pressure acting on a matting surface okay so it, it is very obvious that a pressure acting on a matting surface should always be less than or equal to the permissible value of a maximum pressure okay so it will be seen during the subsequent analysis that slide with design in terms of maximum pressure is quite complicated sometimes this design is replaced by a simpler procedure based upon average pressure acting on a matting surface so the equation over previous equation 4.3 is converted into an average pressure equation form okay so you can see p average should be less than or equal to permissible value of average pressure now the design condition for stiffness stimulates that the deflection of a cutting edge in a direction that significantly influence the machining accuracy should not exceed the certain pre specified permissible value that is pre defined permissible value so the condition may be expressed as for stiffness okay considering the stiffness that is deflection should not exceed so what is what is delta i in a bracket so that is called permissible deflection of a cutting edge and delta i is a deflection that is actual deflection of a cutting edge so remember three equations first basically for a wear resistance that is maximum pressure should be less than or equal to permissible pressure of a maximum uh, value okay p second is p average so p average that is pressure average pressure acting on a matting surface should be less than the permissible value of an average pressure value okay and the next criteria is for a stiffness so delta represents a deflection so obviously the deflection uh, which is going to act in a particular direction should be less than or equal to the permissible value of deflection okay so remember this three criteria now let's begin next we need to de see designs of slide waste for a wear resistance okay so starting with that in accordance with our previous equation which we have seen p max less than or equal to p uh, we would say permissible value and second was a p average less than or equal to the permissible average value so the design of slide waste for a wear resistance requires first p average and p max to be known that is we should know the average value and a maximum pressure acting on a matting surface okay and then after we should also know the how much is a permissible value which we required okay for a particular slide wave so the value of p average that is permissible average value and permissible maximum pressure value are specified for different operating conditions of a slide wave on the basis of experience okay that is we would say empirical uh, we would say formula will be formed that is on a based on past experience okay for determining these values it is first necessary to determine that what are the forces which are acting on a matting surface so next target would be to determine the forces acting on a matting surface so as we have uh, seen that various combinations of slide waste can be used in our last session that is combination of 
B and flat slide ways, then flat and flat slide ways, right? So first we are going to consider a case that force acting on a matting surface in a combination of V and flat slide ways. Now this is a question which has been asked in your exam. Okay, so most important derivation. The combination of V and flat slide ways is commonly employed in a lathe machines. So the schematic diagram you will see in the next slide okay of a slide way and the forces which are acting on a system in case of an orthogonal cutting okay so the forces which are acting would be first is a weight of a carriage right we know that on a slide way of a lathe machine carriage is mounted right so weight of a carriage would be exerted in a downward direction let's say that is g denoted by capital g second is a cutting forces component Right, so when a, uh, when a tool is brought in contact with a workpiece, we know various cutting forces are going to act in a radial direction, in an axial direction, right, and in a direction of cutting speed. So cutting forces components Pz in a direction of velocity vector, okay, and Py in a radial direction that is perpendicular to the axis of a workpiece. And third is a unknown forces, that is, these are the normal forces acting on a surface. So these unknown forces, let's say, would be force A. B and C acting on a matting surface. Okay, so remember, first is weight G, second Pz and Py, and third is unknown normal forces, perpendicular forces to the surface, that is our matting surface. So let's see that, as you can see the diagram over here, it is depicted that loading diagram for a combination of V and flat slide base under orthogonal cutting conditions. Now over here, you, you can see this diagram, this circle is a workpiece, okay, this is a bar, having a diameter small d. The axis, you can see this vertical axis is called a z axis, this horizontal axis is our uh, y axis and the uh, axis perpendicular to the plane, okay, this axis is our x axis, okay, that is uh, along we can say, uh, the uh, along the axis of the bar, the axis is our x axis. Okay, now as we know that this uh, workpiece is going to rotate, so the cutting velocity, right, would be perpendicular. Okay, so we can say the forces, the cutting force would be Pz in a cutting speed direction. Okay, this is our cutting tool. You can see this diagram, this represents our cutting tool which is brought in contact with a workpiece. Now, this entire arrangement, see on a bottom side, this represents a combination of a slide wave. As you all have seen the lathe machines, there are two rails which are going on a machine bed, right? There are two rails. So, that rails are basically the slide wave. So, first rail, if you see on one side, it has a combination. That is our, one is a flat surface, second is an open V type. Okay, so this is a combination of flat and V slide way and on a second rail again you you would see a combination of a flat and a v open v slide way so both are you you can see are mounted on a machine tool pad okay and you can see this surface which i am showing by a cursor is a representation of a carriage which means a carriage is mounted on this slide ways okay so we can say that the what would be the matting surface between this carriage and a slide way so this surface as you can see uh, the force represented by c okay c is a force which is acting normal force similarly over here on this v v slide way you can see there are two surfaces two okay so you can see on a one surface of a v a force perpendicular is capital a and on another surface force acting that is normal is capital b now let's say that this force a is making an angle alpha okay with a vertical similarly that force b that is a normal force to this uh, v open the slide way is making an angle beta with the vertical x okay okay guys now the, the center distance remember the center distance between these two slide ways okay this first combination of slide way and second rail that is second combination is let's say small b okay so that center distance is small B. Okay, remember unknown forces, normal forces are how much? A, B, and C that we need to determine. Okay, now let's say H is a distance of this machine tool, or we can say center of a workpiece to the center of a slide base, and G is a force which is acting in a downward direction. Okay, 
Now we need to resolve these forces first in a y direction and second in a z direction. Okay, guys. So how we can resolve? You all know mechanics. You have studied mechanics of solid mass, right? So the unknown force is determined from the following equilibrium condition, as you can see on your screen. Sum of projection of forces on the y-axis would be zero. Okay, that is all the summation algebraic sum would be how much zero. Okay, that is our target for equilibrium condition, right, guys? Okay, so now sigma y is equal to zero. Now a sine alpha. So you can clearly see that when we resolve this uh, component a in a horizontal direction that is along y-axis. So what would be the uh, equation? So what would be the uh, equation of force that would be so we would say a sine alpha right in this horizontal direction and similarly in a vertical direction would be a cos alpha right guys okay similarly so now let's say that on a on this right side uh, the sign convention is considered positive okay so it is written plus a sine alpha minus b sine beta so you can see the force b is acting on this side so when we resolve this the in a horizontal direction it would become b sine beta okay and plus which is the force which is acting in a horizontal direction so that is py you can see a radial force which is py okay so plus py which is equal to zero let's say this is our equation number 4.6 similarly sum of projection of forces on a z axis would be zero okay so again that is in a vertical direction so sigma z is equal to zero now as I told that in a vertical direction the component of force A would be A cos alpha similarly the component of B would be B cos alpha but both are in a upward direction right so sign convention would be positive let's say plus A cos alpha plus B cos beta similarly the force which is acting on a flat surface of a slide way is C which is acting in a normal direction that is in upward direction right normal force so plus C minus Pz is a force which is acting in a downward direction and uh, the G is a weight of a carriage which is again acting in a downward direction. So both would be minus. So you can see minus Pz minus G is equal to 0. Okay. Now next we need to do or uh, find out movement of all the forces which is acting about the x-axis. That is along the axis of our work. So it would be again movement would be 0. So you can see so, uh, summation of mx is equal to 0 equation becomes a cos alpha into b by 2 we know that movement is equal to force into the perpendicular distance right so if you see this force which is acting in a vertical direction a cos alpha so how much is the distance from the center that is from the axis x axis so we would say it is b by 2 you can clearly see the dis center distance between two slide waves is b so the half distance will be how much b by 2 so over here it is written a cos alpha into b by 2 Similarly, for uh, force B, that would be B cos beta into B by 2. Okay, now for force Pz, right, so it would be how much? So the distance would be uh, minus Pz into D by 2. So you can clearly see the diameter of a workpiece is small d, right. So the center distance from this extreme position of Pz would be how much? That is from this pz force to the center axis would be how much so it would be d by 2 right so it is written minus pz into d by 2 minus py now py is a force that is in a horizontal direction so a movement about this would be how much so we would say minus py into h so you can see the center over here that is from this axis it would be minus p uh, minus py into h and for c so how much is the distance so c is a force in a vertical direction but the center distance would be how much so it would be b by 2 so minus c into b by 2 is equal to 0 let's say this is our equation of a moment about x axis denoted by 4.8 okay now from this equation we are going to make c as a subject and we are going to uh, cancel out b by 2 okay so we are when we cancel out b by 2 from this entire equation so what is going to become so finally making subject c the equation will become a cos alpha plus b cos beta minus pz into d by b minus py into 2h by b so over here you can clearly see that there is py by py into h right so when we take b by 2 uh, common out or we can say cancel out so obviously this b term is going to be divided by py by h okay so either over here you can see it is written py uh, into h by b okay so let's say this is our equation 4.9
Now this equation which we have obtained for our C that is normal force on a flat slide way we are going to substitute it in our equation number 4.7. So you can see this equation for uh, we would say vertical direction z axis. So in this equation when we substitute this value of C what we will get? So we get a cos alpha plus b cos beta plus a cos alpha plus b cos beta minus pz into d by b minus py into 2h by b minus pz minus g is equal to 0. Okay, so this is the equation which we are going to obtain after substituting a value of c in our equation of uh, projection of forces in a vertical direction that is zx. Okay, let's see further. So the final equation we can say that we are going to add add up a cos alpha plus a cos alpha will become 2 a cos alpha right so over here directly the, it is written 2 in a bracket a cos alpha plus b cos beta is equal to pz in a bracket 1 plus d by b plus p by into 2h by b plus g by 2 where from uh, over here further it is going to be formed as a cos alpha that is taking 2 on the other side we get a cos alpha plus b cos beta okay for the simplifying we get equals to pz in a bracket d plus b upon 2b plus py into h by b plus g by 2 let's say this is our equation number 4.10 now if the apex angle of the b is 90 degree then assuming beta is equal to 90 minus alpha the solution of a simultaneous algebraic equation that is 4.10 6 and 4.10 will give the value of force A and a value of force B. Okay, so what we are going to get? So we get A is equal to Pz in a bracket D plus B upon 2B cos alpha plus Py into H by B cos alpha minus Py sine alpha plus G by 2 cos alpha. Let's say this equation of force, normal force A is denoted by equation 4.11. Similarly, we are going to get uh, value of B after substituting this in equation 4.10. So, what we, it, it, it will become? So, B equals to Pz in a bracket D plus B by 2B sin alpha plus Py into H by B sin alpha plus Py cos alpha plus G by 2 sin alpha. Okay. Now, since we have found out two normal forces A and B. Now, the third one remaining is a C which is acting on a flat surface. So how we can obtain? So we can substitute this value of a and b in our equation 4.9. We get the following expression for c. So it is become c is equal to pz in a bracket b minus d upon 2b minus p by into h by b plus g by 2. So finally we have found out equation c also. Let's say this is our equation 4.1. Okay, so in this technique we have determined the determined the forces which are acting on a combination of v and flat slide width. Remember three forces which we need to find out. Okay guys, so this, with this we are completing our derivation of determining the forces. In today's session we are keeping up to you. In next session again we are going to determine the forces which are acting on a slide waist but with a combination of two flat surfaces. Okay, so till then stay tuned and thank you all.